All right, guys, I tried to film this actually um, a couple times and it went over half an hour, but I'm going to be doing my NHL 2021-22 season predictions, a little less conventional than maybe you expected. We're going to be using the tier maker this time around, and I hope you like it. It's a little something different and maybe something you didn't expect from me. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be ranking each team. We're going to put them into a category. So the first one is league juggernaut, as in I think they're going to be at least finishing within the top two in their division. Still cup contenders, definitely making the playoffs, no questions asked. Could go either way, meaning, you know, obviously could make the playoffs or could not. On the cusp, very, very close, just needs a little extra something, something. Hoping for Shane Wright, as in, yeah, um, they're tanking. <laughs> so, we're just gonna be putting each team into each category. We're gonna look over um, what each team has lost, each team has gained, and I'm gonna give my perspective a little bit on each one, to a varying degree, <laughs> for the sake of time. But uh, yeah, we're gonna start off with Anaheim here. So, largely the same team. Uh, not a lot of changes here. Still have a lot of, um, you know, younger guys, um, up-and-comers kind of finding their way here. And obviously still John Gibson and Nett, so that's good. Um, yeah, Zegers still there on the 1C, so um, looking still kind of like a young team with, with some veteran uh, help as well. So we're going to say, I'll put them, yeah, unfortunately on the cusp. Arizona, another team that is definitely, well, yeah, they're they're definitely rebuilding for sure. Uh, first line looks pretty good, and then after that, it kind of drops off. Christian Fisher is still a bright spot. Jacob Chikrin, but they lost uh, Christian Dvorak, Oliver Ekman Larson. Obviously, their goalies are gone. Um, so, this looks like a very, very different squad from last season comparatively. We're just going to put them down there. And now, we're going to go to Boston. She said, I think I'm going to Boston. I think I'll start a new life. Yeah. One of those teams, you just pretty much always know they're going to be making the playoffs regardless. Now, obviously, they lost Krejci. They did bring him some uh, reinforcements, though. They got Eric Holla now. They got Nick Foligno uh, late last season. Biggest question mark for me is Annette. Uh, they're definitely going to be missing Tuka Rask. I believe his return date is set to be around um, January-ish, but he has to get signed first, so that's going to be something. But, like I said, trusty old Boston. I say they're still cup contenders. Can't go wrong with that, in my opinion. Oh, Buffalo. Yeah, look at this roster. Unfortunately, I asked y'all uh, which team on paper looked worse, them or uh, Arizona. Most of you said Buffalo. I believe it was a close to like an 80-20 split, but um, yeah. And that's a big question. I don't think Eichel's going to be back. So I think it's going to be a rough ride for Buffalo and their fans, unfortunately. So we're going to go to this. <laughs> Pretty safe. Calgary. Largely the same team from last year. Now, they did lose Sam Bennett late last um, last season. They do still have Markstrom and Nett, so that's a good sign. Not too sure. A lot. Of, I don't know a lot about the backup there, but largely the same team. Not a lot of changes. Now they almost did make the playoffs last year. They 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 were close towards the end. So I'm gonna say that they could. There's a possibility. Next up, Carolina. Oh, also Blake Coleman was new to uh, another big addition. <laughs> I can't believe I just missed that. To uh, to Calgary as well from Tampa. So now Carolina really, yeah, they, they did make some additions here and they lost a few guys. So obviously, yes, very caught Kinemi was a big one. And it'll be interesting to see if he can work his way up in the lineup there eventually. And Tony D'Angelo was a big one. Um, obviously these, these two guys are new on the bottom pairing and the goalies are new as well. I feel like these two are pretty proven. I mean, I would say Anderson's still gonna be trying to bounce back from last season, but he was, man, he was injured and he wasn't a good season for Freddie. So I feel like they're still going to be within the top two. They look good still on paper to me, so uh, I'm gonna put them there. Chicago, one of those teams that like, I don't know, kind of like Philly and like maybe a few others, it's like really hard to tell. <laughs> Maybe a little bit like a Rubik's Cube, you can't quite get there and solve, you know, figure it out. But anyway, the top two lines look good. Overall, I think Captain Sirius is back now. They've got Seth Jones and they've got Mark Andre Fleury. So like I said, this is kind of a tough team to predict. But if I were to put my finger on it, I would say that there's a very strong chance that they could make the playoffs. Next up, Colorado. I mean, you see this team and it's just like, yeah, I'm kind of wasting my time <laughs> explaining because... You see this roster and it's just like, I mean, that first power play unit, that's like, that's golden. Like, oof. Anyway, um, Net, I feel like Darcy Kemper is probably going to be carrying a lot of the load that seemed to be the case last year with um, Grubauer, so Francois. 
probably be playing a minimal amount of games, so um, probably be this, the strong starter is what I would expect. But yeah, um, first two lines look pretty good. Darren Helm in a um, Avalanche jersey should be interesting. <laughs> He's on the Red Wings forever. Uh, so I'm gonna put them right there up top. Um, CBJ, another kind of team like Dallas last year that just really struggled. That I mean, we, we saw them being somewhere else and um, they unfortunately weren't able to make the playoffs. So we still have, um, you know, Frostovic Line A from last year's trade. All the same names largely. We've got Vorchek, a new guy. Obviously lost Seth Jones. Oh, the goaltending still looks good. Just locked uh, Merce Lincoln's up on a new deal. So that's good news for Jackets fans. But unfortunately, got to put him at the bottom. Dallas, like I said, one team that disappointed a lot of people. We, we thought they would be different in a different place last year. But obviously they had COVID dealing with. But anyway, yeah, they got Ryan Suter. Not too sure what's going to happen in net. Hope he's somewhere in the mix. Bishop's injured, which is not a surprise. I'm going to say they could make the playoffs. Detroit. Detroit is a interesting team because I feel like that they've really made a lot of good strides in the right direction. And, you know, some people may um, still be doubting them. And I'm not, you know, definitely saying they're making the playoffs or anything. But when I mean, you look at these names, like Jacob Verona here, Cider's supposed to be one of those guys that's going to pop off here soon. And obviously the net um, looks pretty good. Got Nick Delkovich in there. He's going to be trying to prove a lot um, after being a contender for the colder there. So I'm going to say a lot of people might put them here, but I'm going to put them here. I'm going to say that they're going to be closer to making the playoffs than people think, but they're not going to quite get there. I'm going to go over to Edmonton. Now last year, I feel like the Canadian division was a little bit easier to tread, but they did bring in Zach Hyman. So that's a good addition for them. Decor is kind of questionable. Not too sure how this, I, I like CC was great in Pittsburgh, but I'm not too sure how Keith's going to work out for them. I guess we shall see. Uh, obviously they gave Nurse that big contract. He's going to be trying to prove himself. Net is not looking good either. They did not make any changes. They, I believe they needed to, but they didn't. So this is really tough because I want to put them here, but McDavid and Dreisaitl, put them there. And I mean, obviously Hyman, like Hyman as well, like that, that's probably the X factor right there for me, put him in there, so. Florida, team that surprised us in a good way last season. And I've actually heard some some initial analysts think that Florida is going to win the cup. One of one of them actually said that. And I, Mike Kelly's taken it a step further. We did our analytics show a couple of weeks ago. He has them winning the Stanley Cup this year. I was like, wow, that's a lot of faith there. But um, anyway, the top two lines are looking pretty good. Spencer Knight's going to be trying to prove himself here this season. He's going to be trying to uh, eventually work his way into that starter role, I feel like. Goaltending looks pretty good, pretty solid, and D decor looks looks pretty good. I mean, it could be a little better, but I'm going to say they definitely make the playoffs. I don't, I don't see Florida missing the playoffs. LA, one of those lineups are definitely taking some strides in the right direction. Philip Deneau, it's a really good addition for them. Edler's kind of getting up there in years, but he could still be um, a nice little puck mover for him. He throws his body around real good, some physicality. Cal Peterson's trying to possibly work into that starter role here. I'll put him on the cusp. And Minnesota Wild. Another team that proved a lot of people wrong last season. I said they were going to make the playoffs for sure last season. I was like, yes, they're making it. Some people, even Wild fans, didn't believe me. They're like, no way. I was like, no, nah, they are. Um, and obviously, this this roster is largely the same. Now, they did lose a couple vets in Prize and Suter. But they got this uh, young Matthew Boldy that's going to be trying to prove himself in the lineup this season. And I really think that this lineup still looks pretty good. Now, they did lose, obviously, like I said, Suter. But their decor was already pretty solid to begin with. I believe Alex Galagoski is a Minnesota native, so that's neat. Net still looks good. I'll put them there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to Montreal. This team actually, I do think they they look a little better on on the scoring side of it. And you do have Mike Hoffman. You still got Tyler Toffoli. Um, those are guys that can really pull the trigger for you. Now, it's going to be interesting how Nick Suzuki works out in the 1C role. They did lose, like, Dano, so that's that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Nick suter has gone. Uh, that's a huge hole for them. A voice in the locker room for sure. Still, net looks good. If I had to say it, now, obviously they proved us wrong last year, but I'm going to say it could go either way for them. Got Nashville. Yeah, Nashville was just one of those teams, like, I f other people said this, like, they just didn't interest them. Like, they were just, I don't know 
just a team that was just kind of boring to watch, honestly. No offense if you're a Preds fan, but I don't know what it was. Anyway, still, I mean, they, they do have that new Shane, Forsberg. No real big stars, you know, that jump off the paper, other than maybe Roman Yossi. They managed to keep um, Tia at home, so that's good, but they did lose Ryan Ellis. Saros is going to be taking the reins largely this season. Riddick backing him up there. Saros was really good last season, and I want to say that they're on the cusp. Now, this team is one that is, I believe, getting there. They did obviously make some strides as far as the, the defense department goes. Ryan Graves, Dougie Hamilton looks like a great first pairing there. We still have Blackwood, Bernier backing him up. Yeah, they're still, I feel like, going through some growing pains though. I want to say they're almost there. They're almost into that, that playoff possession, but not quite. New York Islanders, this team, I mean, they look great on paper, honestly. This is supposed to be one of, one of the best D pairings in the league right here. Pelik and Pollock, and then obviously uh, Chara is an addition. They've got Parise. Net still looks good. Decent. Not necessarily the best tandem in the league, but still decent. Decent enough for a structural system such as the one that Trotz runs here, so. <laughs> I'm done underestimating the Islanders. <laughs> Conference finals past two years, just done underestimating them. So I'm going to say they're going to be a juggernaut. All right, so I think the New York Rangers are going to miss definitely Pavel Dusnevich, but honestly, they still look pretty good. They still have, you know, obviously Adam Fox, Norris winner last season. Yeah, Cabo Caco there in the first line spot, so Lafreniere, so we'll see how that goes. Still, bottom six looks a little, a little shaky. I like, hmm, hmm, this one's a tough one. This is the Metro. Metro is a really tough division. I'm gonna say they could go either way. So it, it might, they might make the playoffs. There's a possibility. Over to Ottawa. This team really surprised a lot of people last year. Pesky Sins, they were beating a lot of a lot of the Canadian division top teams. Surprised some people. So I think the lineup, I mean, they're very young, right? They're a very, very young lineup. So they're still kind of coming into their own here. I think that the net's gonna be a question mark. I don't know how Murray is gonna do after last season. And largely the same names here. I'm gonna say they're almost there, but I don't. I don't think that they're necessarily gonna be tanking, like the bottom of the bottom. All right, Philadelphia. All right, Philadelphia. Well, this team, they have made a lot of additions. So we've got Atkinson, Broussard, which I don't even know how many teams he's been on at this point. I'm gonna say at least eight. Anyway. They got Ellis. They really tried to beef up their blue line because this was uh, their biggest issue and they knew they needed to address it. So obviously Fletcher has um, done that here. We see Ellis, Ristolainen, and Yendo are all new. Martin Jones as well to back up the young Carter Hart. And both netminders are going to be trying to redeem themselves from an off season last year. So yeah, I, I'm gonna say maybe Philly Falls. I could be wrong, but we'll we'll see how it goes. But I'm gonna I'm not too sure right now. Anyway, over to Pittsburgh. Yeah, and you've got to remember that these two centers here aren't gonna be here at the beginning of the season. So Jeff Carter, assumably, is gonna be the one C. And honestly, we didn't make a lot of changes. I think we got like maybe one player as far as like a roster player, and that was it. Everything still is mainly the same. So uh, Brock McGinn was our addition. I say go either way. San Jose. Not too sure what's going to happen with Evander Kane. I don't think anybody is. I don't even know if Kane's sure what's going to happen, but Benino is a newer guy. The decor is kind of questionable. I know Burns had an off year last year, so did Carlson. Not too sure what's going to happen to Edward Blasic. He's been on the rumor mill for a while. And Aiden Hill and James Reimer for the netminders. Yeah, it's not looking too good, honestly. Not too sure what's going to happen to Hurdle either. He's been in trade talks quite frequently. I'm going to put them here unfortunately. Seattle Kraken, this one should be fun. Yanni Gord is going, I think he's going to be pretty good for them. Some people might be questioning it, but honestly, he was playing where he was in Tampa because of the talent. But do you have also a good second line center in Jared McCann? He was great in Pittsburgh. Tanev will bring some flair and a little aggressiveness, physicality. Also know him from Pittsburgh. Not too sure though about the second line other than McCann. First line looks all right. Defense looks okay. Uh, could be a little better, but you know, brand new team. Net, probably the best category of this team would be net, I would say. I would say that they're on the cusp. They're almost there, but not quite. Busnevich was a big addition for St. Louis. 
obviously Tarasenko, that, that whole situation is up in the air right now, so not too sure what's going to happen with that. But I have heard a lot of reports that um, indicate that he's probably going to be staying in St. Louis. I'm going to say they definitely make the playoffs. Largely the same core. Uh, they did get rid of, what was it, Hoffman uh, as well. Anyway, uh, we're going to go on to Tampa. Yeah, they, they, they did lose Coleman, obviously Gord. They have lost a few names, uh, got Corey Perry. But in net, still got Vasilevsky, so can't rule them out. I mean, I'd be pretty silly if I didn't put them here. I mean, back-to-back -back cup champs, so pretty much no-brainer in my opinion. It's going over to Toronto. Another team that, you know, has a lot to prove, a lot on their shoulders, maybe the most pressure out of all uh, teams coming in. They're definitely going to be trying to crack the first round, make it into the second, but when are they not? There's been a lot of changes in net, definitely. We've got Jack Campbell and Peter Morazic. Frederick Anderson is going to Carolina. Obviously, they're going to be trying to overcome the loss here of Zach Hyman and try to compensate for that, but they still have the, you know, the top four here. So I'm going to put them right there. Vancouver Canucks, Lise Pedersen and Quinn Hughes have yet to receive extensions or their first, what do you say, big boy contracts. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be interesting. Connor Garland's new. Net's still the same. Well, Net actually isn't the same. They lost, my bad, they've lost Braden Holtby. But they got Yaroslav Halak. And in my opinion, I think he is just as good, if not better, maybe than Holtby as far as if he's in a backup role. If he's in, but Holtby wasn't, so. But anyway, I think... Yeah, I think that's a safe place to put Vancouver right now. I just, I don't know. Sorry, Nux fans. <laughs> you can see still here with Vegas, they do have that sort of, not vacancy, but a little bit of a lack there in the 1C position. That's one area that they didn't address yet, but who knows, maybe they're waiting for Eichel. I don't know. Moving on down, not a lot of huge changes other than net. And Robin Leonard is going to be assuming the first starter position with Marco Fleury gone, so that's probably their biggest loss, honestly. They got Nolan Patrick as well. I believe they already assigned him to another, to a deal recently. So, Vegas, yeah, why not? Capitals. Capitals largely have the same lineup for the most part. Not a lot of losses. Now they did lose, obviously, Verona was a big one last season. We'll say they're definitely making the playoffs. Winnipeg. And they're another team similarly to Philly. They did have that issue of decor was, you know, lacking last season. Knew ne they needed to address it, so they did. So we have here a really solid top six. And Brennan Dillon and uh, Nate Schmidt were also both added into the mix. Connor Hellebuck is still in net, so we're going to say that they definitely make the playoffs. Honestly, I can't remember the last time they missed the playoffs. It's been it's been quite a while. Like it's been I would say it's been at least 4 or 5 seasons, but I hope y'all enjoyed this. There may have been a few surprises, but we'll see how this pans out, you know, at the end of the season, but you know, as always, there's always those teams that, you know, totally totally prove you wrong uh, for better or for worse, but I really hope you enjoyed this and I tried to make it as concise and short as possible. Thank you for watching and yeah, can't wait to watch some hockey.